feeling more comfort for myself to say, okay, what, what, what it, can we do? What are we capable of? What things do we need to maybe learn from the past of like, let's be you know better in this area? What will be different with your defense and what they've been accustomed to in the last year or so? Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, there are some similarities which I think is good for our guys that you can draw on. I, I think, you know, a lot of times defensively, it's like it's like learning a new language, right? It's a, it, we may call it this, you call it that prior to whatever it is, it's, it's learning those terms. But, um, you know, I, I think for us, man, it, it's, it's really focused on, we want to be very aggressive in everything we do. We want to apply pressure on the quarterback. Um, and, and to me, defense is so much about what is your effort? What is, how do you tackle? Um, and how do you execute more than what you do? So I guess, I guess, long story short, it's more about how you do things than what you do. That, that's our focus. Like, how are we going to do this with a great energy effort and 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 level of execution in our tackling? Yeah, you're probably not going to do anything that's going to fool anybody. But it's just offensive guy that's saying about everything. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, when, when you when you look at it, I mean, everyone, everyone does some form of something. You could point someone else does is similar, but it's it's always more about like who's doing it and how are they doing it. You know, what, what is the level they're doing it at? DJ, have you worked with um, Prime or, or any of the guys on the staff before? Or are you sort of coming in and trying to, you know, build new relationships with those guys? Yeah, I have not. I mean, I, you know, Prime is a guy that, that um, I followed him at, at Ole Miss. Um, you know, a guy I've known and, and, and we know plenty of similar people and I work together. You know, Charles Kelly is, you know, I feel like I, I've known and worked with him because we have so many people in common that we both worked with. So I have a really good relationship with him, and, and he, he's fantastic. But but technically, no, any guy on that staff, I have not. I've, there's some guys off the field that I've brought with me, but on the field, no. Is it hard, you know, leading a staff that you really didn't put together yourself, so to speak? I, to be honest with you, like that, that's a concern. That was a concern, but but a credit to those guys. It, it's been it's been really smooth, and we have a great group of guys, really talented coaches, and 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 good people, and, and we we've meshed and got along very well. Since you left Maryland, why do you think you deserve a second chance at this coaching career? Um, second chance of coaching career. I, I, you know, I, I think all along the, the people that that, that that know you and been around you, they they, they know you. I, I mean, I think those, those opportunities are provided by people that, that have done their homework and, and know who I am as a person and what I stand for as a coach. And you know, that's that's it. I'd be someone else's, I guess, question and answer, not mine. How are you different from from the time when you were in Maryland? I think that there's evolution always in, in I think in life and in, in coaching that you know I'm different this year than I was from last year. You know I think you always you always learn you you, you look back reflect and say okay what, what are things I could have done differently done better that's part of the improvement we always do with our players I would say coaches let's do it for ourselves too like evaluate how we can do things better and differently and so you know I think that's you know if you're not growing or learning as a person right then then, then what are you doing? DJ, I know you just threw past in, but um, what do you like about some of the personnel you've seen so far? Where do you think could be the strengths of your, of your defense possible? Yeah, I mean, it, it's early. Like yesterday was the first day with with, with pads on, um, but I, I, I like like all of our guys are, are really, I think, committed to to trying to do things we're asking them to do. Like you can see the want to out there, the effort playing together, um, and, and they're very coachable, you know, and so. I think we're, 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 we're just let the meeting right now to talk through personnel and what all it is. I mean, we're especially on defense because we're a, a new system, and I, I'm trying to learn the guys are like we're not real depth chart based right now. It's we have groups and we're rolling and rotating and giving guys all opportunities to be out there and show what they can do. And so you know we're far from making those decisions, but I do I, I like the mindset and, and the culture and, and, and what we have with these guys right now. I feel like uh, I'm sorry. Is it going off that? What's your early impressions of Antonio Kite? Yeah, Antonio, he's extremely talented. I mean, he's you know just a natural um, movement and cover skills for a corner. Um, and then you know, I, I think Antonio like he's got to keep on his confidence. I I, I I see so much in him that maybe he doesn't always like at least show outwardly that he sees it himself. But he, he has a chance to be a really good player for us. He'll, he'll help us. Um, your group in particular, linebackers, you do have some veterans there, right? Dorian, yes. How do you feel about that? Group? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel good about those guys. Like, I, I think those guys are, you know, I say all the time, like, your, your Mike linebacker, your inside linebackers are kind of the quarterbacks of the defense, and we have 
good experience, and, and I think the right guys there. Um, you know, I, I think Austin Keys and I, I, I go back and I, I coached him when I was at Ole Miss as well, so I've had a relationship with him. And, and uh, Gene has been awesome. I mean, he, he's he's such a fun guy to coach, to be around. Man, he's got energy and a big smile, and, and, and goes 100 miles an hour. And and, and Dorian's been a great addition for us. I mean, just an experienced guy. Um, you know, really really good knowledge of the game, leader type person. And so I think all three of those guys, for sure, are, are a major part of what we're building around. Them. And I know, again, personnel wise, um, you got two true freshmen at linebacker. You got three freshmen defensive linemen, another freshman edge or two. Um, do you? And these are not guys you recruited necessarily, but how do you feel about their talent? Yeah, but we're really excited about that class. Th those guys are, are they're all very talented, and it's such an advantage now, like be, being here mid year and going through all this. You know, they're they're. They're obviously, you know, at times look like freshmen out there, but at times they, they flash and do stuff like, whoa, okay, this guy can really do stuff to help us. So it, it's the biggest thing is creating the consistency of, you know, to be out there playing, it's got to be where, like, the coaches know, all right, I know what I'm going to get from this guy, or at least have a pretty good idea of what you're going to get. And so that's what they're working on. But these reps are all so valuable for those guys, and, and we feel great about that class as a whole of their talent level and, and where they're going to be. How is it as a veteran when you get in your business? And you've been at Maryland, and you've been at Ole Miss, and you've been at Texas a and you've been at Auburn, and your family. How, how difficult is that? Because you never yeah. know. I mean, you can be the greatest coach in the world and still lose your job if, uh, if the head coach gets fired. That's right. So, how difficult is that for a family to cope with? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, especially, like, for us in particular, as, you, as your kids get older, it becomes more difficult. When, right. it, when it's just you and your wife or your kids are young, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like you pick up and go, know. yeah. But it's 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 your kids. If we're like you know, they we know what we signed up for. They they they, they didn't sign up for, it. and so then you know they have their group of friends and they're on their sports teams and they're in school and then they they they've got up and, and move and leave and so yeah, th those are all the things that, that definitely you know people don't always think about, but they're they're major for a family. Yeah. How involved will Coach Breeze be in the defensive scheme between you and Coach Kelly? Um. I mean, I, everything we do is, is under the, the direction of, of what, how Coach wants things as a whole, his vision of the program. I think, obviously, his majority of his time is spent with offense because that, that's his background, what he does. But, but we're certainly – everything we do, we run by him. We just – you know, we sat and watched practice, and we talk on both sides of the ball, and he's, he's evolved from that standpoint. I, I, I love getting feedback from him from an offensive standpoint of, hey, this, this gives us a problem, that not so much. Like, I, I always love hearing those things. So those are really good conversations for me. Do you mind me asking your recruiting philosophy? Do you like um, have like a buck has to be this size, this speed and stuff? What do you look for when you're out there recruiting our fighters? Yeah, I mean, like we, we do have the, those numbers and, and you don't want to say parameters because like not every guy fits that mold. We're, we're like, I think it's easier to have that at the NFL level because you, you're now, you know, drafting guys that are grown men they, they, they've gone through the maturity of and they're 22 years old and everything else yes they'll still develop as a player but you're kind of getting what you see for us it, it, it's such a developmental game developmental age for these guys to be stuck to those parameters like guys are going to grow their bodies going to change they're only 17 18 years old now it's 16 you know when we're starting to recruit a lot of them so to me it's more about i i, I just I'm, like when the guy's on film you, you want his effort level to show up you want his competitive edge to show up I think guys that are competitive naturally will always find a way to, to rise to the top. And you take an extremely talented guy that doesn't have that type of fight or competitiveness in him, and then you bring him into this level or whatever level it is, at some point when it, when it gets even with them, those guys fade away. And so that's what we're looking for on film. We're looking for in our questions with the coaches and people around them, do they have that edge to them, you know? And then, and then they got to have production. To me, like, like, you know, a guy can run a certain time, you know, jump a vertical, whatever, but like, some guys make plays, some don't. I mean, we want the guys that are making plays. Like, they're there, and they, they find a way to make the play. You know, it's a fun change for me. You know, it's actually something I've coached more than uh, the previously. So, uh, really exciting. Um, excited to coach the guys that are in that room. There's some talent. There's some – it's a unique situation. We've got two – Keldrick's not older, but he's real experienced. And, and J-Mac, and then everybody else is super young. So, it's kind of a fun deal. Um, so – Really enjoyed it so far. Uh, really like uh, the guys and the, and you know their effort, uh, but uh, just trying to uh, just trying to piece it all together day by day.
Jalen was talking a lot about those younger guys yesterday. Just what, what have you seen out of, especially the early and early freshmen so far? Man, they're just really hungry, you know. Um, you know, I think sometimes when freshmen come in, uh, it goes one way or the other where uh, maybe they're a little too cool for school and, you know, and they just kind of feel their way through it. Or they come in guns blazing, not worried about screwing up and things like that. And I think they were doing more of the latter. Um, their attention to detail is good, but at the same time, you know, I've emphasized to them since they got here, hey, don't worry, don't worry about making a mistake. Go out there, play fast, we'll fix the mistakes. And uh, for the most part, that's what they're trying to do. Between the ends and the edge guys, what does practice look like? I mean, are you having them all do the exact same things? I guess yeah. you kind of split that one. Yeah, so I mean, like, so basically when we're in like four-man front structures, I'll have both of the what most people would call the defensive ends, right? The end is one of them, the buck is the other one. Um, if we're playing more odd front things where that buck might be dropping or moving around, I'll just have that guy, that guy will work with Von Trell, so, you know, um, or one of the GAs, you know, so, uh, but, so for now, just of what we've installed so far, I'm working with both those guys. Um, so, uh, they do multiple things, you know, uh, I've always said, and Coach Durkin believes in this, we've got to have enough answers, uh, within our scheme and in our conference to be able to attack people. Uh, we don't want to just get pigeonholed into just being of this or just being of that. So as a coach or coaches, uh, we've got to be able to move those guys around. Do you sense of how Jalen did in his first year at Auburn and what he needs to work on? Yeah, you know, I mean, golly, I, I thought Jalen had a really solid year. Um, I don't think people understand how banged up he was the entire season. Um, you know, I mean, golly, you go watch him play against Georgia, and he looked awesome. Remember, he got the best O-line in the country. Um, uh, I thought as the year went on, he got more healthy, made more plays, played really good versus Arkansas. Um, you know, so I think he's got an opportunity to kind of be a featured guy in our defense to make a lot of plays. I mean, look, Coach Dirk, and he led the – SEC in uh, sacks last year, I believe, and uh, was up there in TFLs in the country, and, and those edge pieces were a huge part of that. So um, I'm really excited for Jalen. You, you mentioned talk, oh, oh, you go. Could you talk a little bit about Amaris and Mike? Because like his high school film yep. is insane. Like, what can he do in year one? So I'm going to make this clear for everybody. This is me being a jerk. I want to help. It's a Morris. All right. Okay. All right. Because because it's so my I, I, I want to make sure early on people figure it out. A lot of people screw it up, but it's a Morris. But um, a Morris could be as talented of anybody on our whole defense just from a freak standpoint. I mean, you're talking about a guy that ran like what, like 11-3 or something like that at like 270 pounds in high school. You know. Um, you know, just he's he's he takes so many steps forward every single day because everything's so new to him, right? Um, so uh, he had a great day yesterday. Um, so uh, really excited for him. Really excited for Auburn to Auburn fans to follow him. Uh, he is going to be a very very talented player for us uh, moving forward. Um, he just needs to come. Uh, with his notebook every single day, ready to learn because uh, it's just a lot of new things for him. Do you anticipate him kicking inside very much, or is he primarily the end right now? I think he's the Keldrick Falk mode. He could yeah. move inside some, but he's a little different now. I mean, he's super twitchy. I mean, I think he's going to stay on the edge the majority of the time. Um, I mean, you go watch team run, and he can run with all the linebackers. I mean, he's a, he's a freak. So uh, there'll probably be some things where he can move inside potentially, but probably as a freshman, will probably don't try to limit moving him around too much to keep it simple for him, you know. Because you take players that's got all the talent in the world, have been blessed with all the physical dudes, but if they're not confident, then it's not going to manifest itself on the field. So that's the biggest thing he has in the team to work on is, hey, you're going to make a mistake, you know, but you got to go and play the next play. And so the two biggest things that he has improved on is play speed and confidence. And, uh, and I, like I shared with him, your play speed is not going to come unless you have confidence. And so those are the two biggest things that, that he and Caleb has to work on. Prime, will there be any big differences in terms of how you coach the corners or what they're expected to do under Durkin compared to Ron Roberts last year so far? Any, any big differences there? Well, you know, you, when you look at the corner position, I mean, whether you're playing uh, realistically, you know, at a power five level, or you're playing in the NFL, the technique and problem is basically the same. You just have to make sure not to fit the scheme. 
And so we're in a little bit of a different scheme, but you really studied the techniques and fundamentals of the same. I mean, you know, you got a lot of play press coverage. That didn't change the mechanics of it. Uh, you don't have to line and play some off coverage. You have to play zone, sort through routes. You know, so that job, that job is really going to be the same in terms of technique and fundamentals. The thing they have to grasp really is terminology. You know, and not co you know, the different calls. So uh, when you look at a guy on the back end, I mean, it's really a technique and fundamentals. And uh, it's not, not co in the terminology. And all of us right now are learning a new scheme in terms of learning terminology. Me, at times, I'm hollering out a term that I had that I used five years ago, uh, and then I catch myself. So the biggest thing is the terminology. But the technique and fundamentals on how to take the ball away and play at a high level, it pretty much stays the same.